And uh, first question is going to go to Jamila. Hey, Trey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Doing thanks, well. Um, so you've had a pretty busy summer, or uh, you've been trying to stay active, and you were seen also uh, working out on the beach along with Lonzo Ball. What was that like? Whose idea was that? And what were you trying to work on when you were out there in the sand? Yeah, I mean, uh, so I'm, I'm usually doing a lot of my off-season work um, in L.A. Uh, I did my pre-draft out there. So my trainer that I work with off the court uh, is usually out there. Um, and Lonzo serves the same training with me. So uh, I go to the sand um, every Saturday in the summertime um, and – I do it once a week, so he just joined me one day and um, just got some work in together. Just try to work on it. It's, it's hard pushing off the sand when, when you're in knee-deep sand and doing defensive slides or running up the hill. Like You just get faster and things like that, so uh, it helped me a lot. Next question from Sarah Spencer. Hey, Trey, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Awesome. Um, I have two questions for you. My first one is, how has it been um, just the past two days being able to finally kind of reunite with teammates out there on the court and just be around each other in person again? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been great. It's been great. Um, I mean, I miss these guys. Uh, just being able to play with them uh, on the court again has, has been fun uh, so far. And just being able to be around them, period, has been fun. So uh, not taking this time, not taking this time with them. Um, for granted. Um, my second question is, you talked about this a little earlier, but um, I just wanted to know if I could get your, your thoughts and um, opinion and reaction to uh, the cops who were uh, the charging of the cops or lack thereof charges of the cops involved in Brown and Taylor's death. Yeah, um, I mean, it's, the whole situation is, I mean, it's, it's sad. Um, not just her situation, but I mean, everybody who's, who's had to, to fight through this police brutality and everything going on. Um, but in Brianna's case, uh, it's, it's very sad. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't want to go too deep into it. Um, but for me, that's, that's, all I, that's all the words I had to, to tell anybody. It's just, it's just sad. Thank you. Next question from Chris Kirshner. Hey, Trey, um, what's it been like for you these past six months watching, you know, 22 teams go to Orlando and compete while you can't? Uh, it's been, I mean, mixed emotions. Um, I mean, obviously, I wish I was out there. I uh, wish I could have at least went out there and played, um, played a little bit. But, I mean, seeing the game come back has been great. Watching guys play really well has been good, too. I uh, just like seeing the game of basketball again. So it's uh, it's been good, but, I mean, of course, I'd rather be out there than, than anybody else. I have a follow-up. Um, does it give you additional motivation to help, you know, lead this team to the playoffs next season? So, you know, if this happens again next season, that you guys aren't there. Yeah, I don't, I don't ever want to not be in the playoffs again. Um, this, is, this is something that, I mean, going through a rebuilding stage is, is going to happen. Um, it's going to take years to I mean, grow together and be together for it to really click. And um, I mean, now we're at that point now where it's, I mean, we're going into year three. Um, and I mean, our chemistry is there. We're, we're starting to learn different things, talk even more. And it's, it's uh, hopefully it clicks. So uh, that's what I'm hoping going into this year. Okay, Raphael, you have the next question going on Trey Trey knowing that this is the first time you've been able to play with uh, been on the same court as Clint Capella and and the fact that you know being excited that you have a big man someone who can rebound someone you can throw a lob to who plays defense how excited are you and what do you expect uh, I'm, I'm excited uh, I'm excited to play with Clint um, I mean, he's he's had a hell of a run um, in Houston. Uh, he's he's very talented on both ends. Um, very smart. Um, I threw him a pass today that I, I did not think he was going to catch, and he caught it on his back hip and and finished the layup. And he's just he's so he's so good with his hands. Um, I can give him a bounce pass or in the air pass, and he'll go get it wherever. And 
Um, he's just he's just a, such a, a cerebral big man. It's uh, it's gonna be fun playing with him. I'm I'm excited. Follow up question: Have you got a chance to throw a lob yet? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've, I've thrown a couple lobs. So. Cool. All right, home team, you're up. Hey Trey, good to see you, man. Uh, question: With the announcement that it, it could be a, a further delay for next year to start, how important is it to stay focused uh, with all the things you guys are trying to improve upon, with uh, maybe a, another delay in the season coming? I think we're all focused. I don't think I don't think that's been a problem uh, with 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 not playing. Um, I think we're more focused than ever. Uh, to be honest with you, I think not playing this long. None of us have gone this long since before we were playing, uh, started even playing basketball, not not playing this long. And just that right there is just, it's been motivating and we're just ready to play. Uh, I know I am, I know I'm ready to go out there and play. And uh, I think I think we're all just, we're very focused. And a follow up, um, your thoughts on, to you right now, you have a long way to go um, for the season, but uh, what's that? Right now, the start of training camp, so when you guys actually get out playing games, what does better defense as a team look like to you? Uh, I mean, that's, that's just something we're going to see when we start playing. Uh, it's, it's uh, I mean, holding teams under a certain certain amount of points uh, every game, I think that's something that we need to, I mean, we'll, we'll all come together before I mean, we start playing and make that make a goal and um, just always try to fight for that goal. Um, I think our offense is going to take care of itself. Uh, we, we've pretty much been a, I mean, a really pretty good offensive team um, for the most part. But uh, our, our defense, we, we definitely um, just, just need to continue to, to work on that. Thank you. Mark Medina, you have the next question. Hey, Trey, good to see you. Hope you're hanging in there. Um, you mentioned the beach workouts. Or what were some of the other creative approaches you took to training given, you know, the tough hand that you've been dealt with, with not being able to do any five on five during this whole uh, stoppage? Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, there's, there's a lot of things. I work out um, in the summer uh, a lot. I, I do a lot of different private, I mean, different types of sessions where I'm doing yoga or I'm doing Pilates or um, I'll go hike out the, different hikes and different things like that. Like, I'm just trying to stay active, especially this this summer with, with everything going on, just not trying to just be lazy. I and mean, this is a time where when you can really be lazy. And I mean, it's just kind of acceptable because it's maybe a smart thing to do uh, with, with COVID going on and everything, staying inside is smart and safe, but trying to be the safest way as possible and trying to stay active and just trying to come up with different ideas is something I've been really, really doing. If you don't mind me following up, I mean, you've been very disciplined with training, but given the reality of not being able to play games, how, what's your level of concern of what that will do long term with your development? No, it, it won't. I mean, it won't affect me, um, I mean, at all. Uh, I, I know my body, I know uh, where, how, how hard I can push it. Um, and, and where maybe I can I can slow down and uh, and I know when we're going to be playing like I know it's going to be um, I mean a couple months from now so not to overload my body now but be smart but also continue to get better and, and focus on that. Next question for Terrell. Hey, what's going on, Trey? Uh, good to see you. Hope everything is well in the mini camp. I want to know, uh, going into year three, what are you looking to accomplish whenever you guys are able to get back on the court? What are you looking to accomplish? And, and what's the biggest thing you want to see, biggest hurdle uh, you want to get over in, in the development of your game? Um, I mean, winning is my my main key. I mean, y'all will probably hear me talk about that all year, ask me about individual things, um, individual stats, individual accolades, all oh, that's Y'all gonna get the same answer all year. My my main focus going into my 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 third year is winning. Um, I think I think that's it's it's always been my focus, but it's 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 even more now than ever. Um, I think I mean watching these games, um, it's it's been tough. Um, just just watching it and just not being in that position. So 
for me, that's that's my main focus going into year three is winning and um, doing whatever I need to do to, to get us over the top and, and get into the playoffs. If I could follow that up real quick, uh, what you mentioned, you, you have been watching a lot of the games. We've seen you on social media giving your own commentary and letting us know what going on, what's going on as far as inside the bubble. Have you have you noticed anything from uh, from any of uh, the other cats, the LeBron James, or even some of the younger guys who are leading their teams right now? Where you've been kind of taking notes or, or taking little secrets that you can use to help yourself and help the Hawks in the future. Uh, I mean, just watching the game. I mean, I'm not necessarily taking anything away or, or learning. Um, we all we all learn differently, and every every team is different too. Um, not every team has the same build, and some some guys have to be. It's just different. It's not the same thing on, on every team. So not necessarily learn from these guys, but it's, it's been good to see younger guys like I mean Tyler Hero play well and all these these young guys. And you see the older guy like Jimmy just being that, that role model and that leader to him. So maybe that's something that something that I can continue to learn and uh, that I've been noticing a lot. Thank you, Dre. Yeah. Okay. Allison, Allison. you are up. Hey, Trey, you know, this year has just been, we talk about how unique and unprecedented it's been, and now there's talks of the season being just pushed back even more. How unique is it for you guys to not being like kind of ramping up your season almost this time of year, and instead now you're kind of in limbo waiting to see when it'll start? Yeah, it's, it's different. It's different. Uh, uh, it's, it's not as new for, I mean, maybe our team, because we're three, four years into the league, so we're this is kind of still kind of new to us a little bit, but it's it's definitely a weird situation. Not going, almost going maybe 11, 12 months without playing a basketball game. It's, it's um, I mean, it's, it's, it could be tough. So um, it's just a different approach, but at the same same time, uh, we all know how to work and get better and take care of our bodies in this time. So uh, it's, it's definitely different though, for sure. Was there anything that you had a chance to um, do this off season that maybe you normally, I know there were so many restrictions with COVID, but you really got to do or focus in on maybe with family or friends that you never normally would be able to do this time of year? For sure. For sure. That's definitely, uh, that's definitely something that I'm, I'm very appreciative of this situation. Maybe the only thing I'm appreciative of it um, is being able to spend that time. Um, this is time I've been able to spend with my closest friends, my family, um, and just be around the same people uh, for for a while. It's been it's been good, um, and that's probably the, the only bright light around this situation. And uh, they they helped me a lot. Next question from Ben. Hey Trey, how's it going? I uh, Steve Nash is now the head coach of the Nets, and I know you you think very highly of him. You spent some time with him last summer. To you, he's one of the five greatest players ever. You know what? What did you think when you saw you know Nash becoming a head coach? Uh, I was excited for him. I was excited for him personally. I I texted him uh, the day it happened and and told him I was rooting for him. Hope he had a great, I mean, great career in coaching. Unless he's playing us, um, <laughs> but I was just I was just happy for him. He's he's a big role model for me. Um, somebody I look up to, and um, it's 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 good to see that. I mean, somebody with that type of knowledge and that type of game. Can now share it to others. Um, I mean, that's that's good to see. Mia, you have a question, and you're next. Hi, Trey. How are you? Hope you're doing well in mini camp. Um, I wanted to ask you, what have you been personally doing um, for the mental aspect? Because we can talk about the physical aspect of getting back in shape and things of that sort. But what have you been doing to train your mind to mentally be prepared with everything going on in this world right now? Yeah. Um, really just, just trying new things out. Um, I'm trying, trying to stay active, trying to just continue to do things. Um, I think whenever I'm just sitting down and just on my phone, not doing anything, I'm, that's whenever I start thinking about other things and it's, it's, it's just not fun. But when I'm, I mean, staying active or if I'm reading a book, like I'm starting to read more, more books now and things like that, just to get my mind off of. Of, of what what's going on so uh those that's those are a couple of things yeah and my follow-up question for you um with that is what are you doing for the team as well making sure they stay focused and 
um, to just remember no matter what, if the season was to start in December, January, February, or whatsoever, to just stay focused and to stay in tune with everything going on. Yeah, well, I mean, thankfully, I don't have to, to worry about that too much. I mean, every time I, I call, I mean, DeAndre Hunter, he's, he's in the gym back in, in Virginia, or if I'm calling Cam or, or Clint or whatever, they're always in the gym. Like, it's, it's, it's something that you have to, as a leader, I mean, talk to your, your team and make sure they're still focused and things like that. But like I said, with this team, like, we're, we haven't played in so long. And we're, we're, we're all so young. Like, we, we just want to play. So that focus and that, that uh, drive to continue to get better throughout all this has not changed. And uh, that's why I'm super excited even more. Thank you. Generica, you have the next question. Hi, Trey. This summer, you recently left Octagon Sports Agency and you signed with Clutch Sports. And a lot of the young, skillful talent have signed with um, Rich Paul. Can you tell me what it's like working with Rich Paul and being with the agency? Yeah, it's good. Uh, it's been good so far. I um, haven't been with, with Clutch too long, but uh, it's been good. And I mean, I'm still around my agent that I was with since the beginning and Omar Wilkes. And um, so I'm still talking to him every day. He's, he's basically my agent, but being around Rich and being able to, to pick his brain, he's, he's such a businessman. And, uh, so just me wanting to be more than just a basketball player, uh, it's, it's good to have someone like Rich around where I can pick his brain. So it's been good so far. Next question for Sarah Spencer. Um, Trey, you talked earlier about how focused you are on winning going into this next season, whenever that does start. Um, how ready do you think this team is to take, you know, a leap that, that would get you guys to, to winning at a high level? And um, is that something you guys have, have discussed at all, having a, having a focus on that? For sure. Um, we've, definitely, uh, we've definitely all talked about that. We've definitely talked about what we need to do to make that next step. And uh, for me, I think right now, maybe just coming off of just not playing, you don't know if you're ready or not. But from what I know and from what I know and my teammates, I know we'll, we'll be ready by the time it starts. So if we're not ready now, um, we will be by the time it starts. All right, Chris Kirshner, you're up. Um, so I know winning is a, a priority to you, but you've been vocal on, on social media of how you think you're deserving of an All-NBA selection. Why why do you feel like you were worthy of being an All-NBA selection this season? Man, um, I mean, to be honest, I don't get all in, in, into all that. Um, I mean, that's that's not in my control. I can control what I what I do. Um, I just control what I can control on the court. And, um, I just saw a lot of a lot of people talking about the uh, the, the All NBA thing, and I mean I don't I don't remember making too many comments about it, um, but it, to be honest, it, it's just uh, for me personally, I I always strive for more. I mean, I know the position I'm in. Some people would would say they'd be happy just being a I mean an All Star starter in their second year, or I mean top five in points and assists, uh, they would say they're happy about that and, and go on and live and live happy. But for me, I always want more. So uh, that's that's kind of where it is for me. Um, I understand maybe why I didn't get it, but um, that just happens. And next time you just got to, for me, it's just, it's all about winning. I had another question on, on those same lines, but I, I, I saw that you saw the uh, hoops hype story of, you know, the top 13 players um, under 25, you didn't make the cut. Why do you feel like people still don't believe you are one of the top young players in the league? It's been this way since I was in high school, Chris. Uh, I've, uh, I mean, it's every year coming into the league. I mean, everybody remembers what, I mean, what's said about me not being ready, not, not big enough, whatever it was. I mean, I had to overcome that and then now it's something else and I just got to overcome that and it's for me it's, it's not about fighting for other people's I mean respect uh, as far as a fan goes like for me I just I play the game the way I know how um, 
and I mean it's 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 worked for me up to this point, and now I just need to make it. Um, just need to turn around for this this franchise and hopefully get us to the playoffs next year. So that's that's my main focus. I don't want to get into all that. It's not in it's not in my DNA to, to go back and forth about individual stuff. I'm all about this team. Maria Martin, you have a question. Hey Troy, one of the things that I think uh, really flew under the radar is that Vince Carter, his season was cut short and you were able to spend his last season in Atlanta. Was it kind of surreal to you to know that, you know, no more basketball and it was kind of cut short with him? Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely uh, surreal. I think it definitely got flown under the radar a little bit. Um, I remember, like it was yesterday, I think we were going up to Toronto um, a couple weeks after everything had shut down. And I was really looking forward to that. Just not necessarily going up there and playing in Toronto, but like for Vince, just going to Toronto on our last road trip. Um, I knew that was going to be something special for him. I'm, I'm sad he wasn't able to, um, to have that moment with those fans and that, that country uh, where he started. And um, I'm sad for that, but I know uh, he's, he's, um, he's going to be doing really, really big things uh, outside of basketball now. So, What was your biggest takeaway from the year that you spent with him, whether it's conversations or just stuff that you learned? Uh, biggest takeaway, he's – He's just, um, I mean, he's just a, a competitor. I, I think this is the biggest thing I've taken away from Vince is just for him being, I mean, 40 plus years old. I mean, he's achieved so many things in this, in this game, in the NBA at the highest level. And for him to still care the way he did, uh, not even playing very many minutes, but just the, the, the passion. If we lost and he didn't play, he was still mad. Like it was, it was just that competitive nature in him that, I mean, I'll, I'll always remember about Vince. Okay, back to Raphael. Great. Um, piggybacking off of Chris, talking about the um, respect. Your players, the players in the game definitely respect you. Um, as a matter of fact, we um, have a video with all the players talking about how good you are and how much they respect you. And speaking of John Morant, when he came out and said that he can believe that you went on the NBA or NBA team that you should have been, mm-hmm. how does that make you feel knowing that your peers respect you on the court? Yeah, that, that's that's game recognizing game. Uh, that's that's how that's how I look at it. Um, my peers know what I bring to the table. Um, I mean, they like it's just it's just how I, I look at it. And that's I play for. I mean, respect for my peers, um, just my grandfather, um, my family, and my team, and that's that's it. And the the city of Atlanta is is also a thing that I'm, I'm is on my shoulders every time I play, um, and that's that's about it. And everything else is is, is out the door. And but when I see someone like Jaw uh, give me love like that, it's like like I said, it's just game recognizing game, and that's how I looked at it. And then also, we know you have a few good friends in the NBA, but looking at, um, in particular, Donovan Mitchell and Michael Porter, seeing what they're doing inside the bubble, how happy are you for them? And then even players like Luca stepping up, what does that say about the young players coming up in the game? It's great to see. I mean, it's great to see. I, uh, I mean, I was rooting for those guys to, to, to show out, just like they root for me. And... Um, Unless we plan each other, that's how it is. That's how it is when you're when you're close and you grow up and you know these guys since high school and things like that. You're you're pulling for them unless they plan you. And that's how I was looking at it. I was excited seeing Donovan go off for those 50 point games and uh, showing out in the the playoffs. Um, and then I mean Luca in the game winner. I mean that's I mean that was a big time shot, I mean, big moment. And then you see my brother MPJ is, is going going off right now and. Uh, it's good to see him back and flowing into things, but it's it's good seeing those guys and um, and, and all that. But I I wish I was there. I wish I was there at the end of the day. All right. Next question to Jamila. Uh, hey again, Trey. Um, so you're you've always shown your support for the WNBA. You donned the the orange hoodie a little bit earlier this season. Mm-hmm. Um, so what is it about, uh, or what is your opinion of the direction that the league is going and, you know, the Atlanta dream, they added Kennedy Carter 
and just what is it about you know um, the WNBA that you like and also what is it about the hate that you see online that they get yeah um good question I I've always been a supporter of the WNBA um, for me just just knowing how hard it is to play at the highest level of any any profession is tough and I know the work that they put in I've me and Candace Parker have the same trainer, like I said, with me and Lonzo. Like we've, me and Candace have been working out together um, since I've been in pre-draft. And uh, WNBA players will come in. I'll go to sparse games. I'll go to dream games when I'm in Atlanta. Like I'm, I'm back and forth, different things. Like it's fun seeing them play. And then uh, it's kind of tough seeing social media not giving them as much support as, as they deserve. Um, so that's, that's for me. That's where I feel like I need to come in and and show my support because I really do love watching them play and I do respect the game um, that these women play at. And these, uh, I mean, Kennedy Carter uh, is tough. And uh, we, it's crazy, me and her were, um, I think we were meeting all the Americans with each other, same class, uh, both in Chicago. Uh, it was, it was, I met her then. And now for us to both be in Atlanta, uh, it's pretty cool. Next question is gonna be from Mark Medina. Hey, try to follow up on the point made earlier that you've been reading uh, different books. What what have been the main ones and what have been your takeaways? Ooh, I got a couple in here. Uh, it's, it's, it's all about business books, though. It's, it's like, uh, I mean, I have a bunch of different business guys and uh, what they write. And just it's more about the business side of, of moving forward. Um, I, I can show you, but I have to find it in here. But I got a couple in here that I'm, I'm reading. All right, next question for home team. Trey, when you uh, physically down as uh, compared to coming in first year in the league, and uh, what are some of your goals in the weight room with the uh, staff to work through for the for this season coming up? Yeah, um, I mean, for me and the staff, and we, we've already talked a lot about it and just continuing to, to I mean, where I'm at right now, my, my size and my strength is – it's, it's, it's perfect. I just need to continue to stay steady and, and not lose anything and um, just figure out how to do that throughout the season when you play so many minutes and, and uh, at a fast pace, you, you tend to lose what you, what you started out with. And so for me, going into my, my third year, I think that's what we're, we're really focusing on is how to maintain playing a lot of minutes but still having the fuel to do that for a full season. And do you expect people to try you? physically to, you know, kind of test where you are, maybe just try you in general anyway? No, nah, that's been happening my whole life. People have tried me my whole life. Not, I mean, that's not going to, I mean, that's not going to work. But, I mean, this, 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 I just, yeah, that's been happening my whole life, so. Okay. We're going to head back to Sarah Spencer. Um, Trace, I know you guys have really only been together on the court for like two days now, um, but just getting the, your first glimpse at Clint, um, what's he looking like and um, how much of a difference maker could he be for you guys? Yeah, uh, he's, he's looking really good. He's looking really good right now. I think everybody is a little bit um, winded. <laughs> I mean, just getting back into things and we're going such at a fast pace. It's everybody's kind of winded and things like that, but he's, He's been uh, I mean, playing really well, just, I mean, just talking. Uh, you can tell the, the kind of veteran leadership that he has just from being around guys like James and CP. Uh, like you can just tell uh, just from the, the things he says and just how he's so communicative and um, on the defensive end and um, screening and things like that. I think it's, it's going to be very helpful going forward. All right. Chris K. next question. What do you want to prove next season, not only for yourself, but just this team um, as a whole? Because, you know, you've been in this league two years now. You guys haven't won 30 games. So what do you want to prove to everybody? Um, that uh, that a, a, a process works, I think, for me, is just the process. I think right now people, I mean, we're we're – we're in a rebuilding stage. We've been in a rebuilding stage, but now it's time to, like, the pieces are falling together. And um, so hopefully that's, that's something that I'm, I'm, I'm ready to prove to people is that 
I mean, the, the pieces are, are, are kind of together now. All right, these will be the last couple questions. Home team. Lastly, Trey, uh, how did it, um, how did everybody look collectively? Was there, how would you assess the rust with everybody kind of doing their own thing when you guys finally got out there together? Yeah, it's uh, it was a little bit of 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 uh, a rust, um, but it's something that you expected. I mean, uh, some shots that I mean, guys, I mean, hit or miss layups like right around the rim. Uh, just little things that I mean, a, a day or two just being back in the gym with each other can fix. Um, and you could tell the difference from yesterday and today uh, already. So it's it's a, for sure a little rust, but. I mean, if you didn't expect any, we didn't expect any rust coming in uh, after being off for five, six months. Uh, I mean, we've been kidding ourselves. Raphael. Trey, I, I know you say that you definitely want to win, and that's your um, goal, of course, is all you, you know, worry about as far as not thinking about the stats. But being off during this pandemic, did it give you a chance to just – sit back and really think about what you have accomplished individually so far as far as the 50-point game, making an all-star team, starting in the all-star game. Have you had a chance to sit back and reflect on that? Yeah. Um, I mean, just kind of going back to what I said earlier, like, I, yes, I did. Like, I got to sit back and my, my, my best friend I was putting on my YouTube highlights from this season and Showing back the all-star game, the shot, and uh, showing back I mean, my 50-point game or whatever. And, I mean, that's all cool and all, but I, I, I even told him, like, like, I couldn't even watch it. Like, it's, it's so frustrating just for me. Like, I hate, I hate the, the, the narrative of, of, just, of just being just a, a score and statless person. Like, the stats – just don't mean anything and I don't I don't want that narrative to just be like it's, I'm all about stats and um because I'm not and so for me stats is the last thing I'm bringing up or um if somebody brings it up this year to me it's that's the last thing I'm, I'm talking about because that's not me and uh, I'm all about winning and that's what I'm going to be talking about going forward and um the appreciate the individual question though <laughs> real quick um no one got a chance to uh, talk to your father few times during the season, whatever. How influential has he been towards your career? I mean, he always talking about you, bigging you up, even on social media. He's real big <laughs> on social media talking about you. But how um, important has he been to your career? Um, I mean, he's been one of the most important people um, in my career. Uh, just just being there from the beginning, um, driving me from, from Oklahoma to to Texas every weekend just to practice or um, driving me to Kansas City to go practice with Mokan in high school or just anything. He's just been with me from the beginning and he's been, he's been so influential for me and so, um, so helpful for me. So I know we, we've done a lot together um, up to this point and we've got a lot, a lot coming, coming soon and we got a lot more, more to go. Final question for Chris Kirshner. Um, in what ways do you feel like you have to get better on the defensive end of the floor? I mean, it's no secret that, you know, your defensive effort is a topic of conversation we talked about in your two years. So how do you feel like you need to get better on that end of the floor? I think for me it's, it's conditioning. It's conditioning and it's being in the best shape of my life, uh, being able to, to play a lot of minutes and play – with a lot of effort on both ends. So uh, that's, that's really it for me is it's all about being in the best conditioning um, I've ever been in. And so that's, I know on the defensive end, it's, it's, it's all about effort. It's all about effort and being smart. And I have one of them. So it's, it's, it's more about being in the best shape and not, um, and being able to fight on both ends for, I mean, full, full game.